New York for the 2020 SRF loans. It is okay, and they were gonna and they were gonna relay that to the bank that we're only they're only expecting to see that 59 and some change for the next six months. That one that's it. They won't see well, anything. They're only gonna see 54 in uh, January 1st. Yeah, the January first is never fifty-four. No, 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 that's monthly. Fifty-nine a month for six months, and then fifty-four a month for six months. Yeah, that's a monthly, not a one-off. And we have to pay thirty-five thousand in debt service every month too, which is not included on that piece of paper. It's in here somewhere. Right here. So there's your debt service schedule. And that will be every month until 24. 35. That that about the other thing. So all this documentation also came through that office and wasn't relayed to anyone. Which is why we missed our first payment um, in, of July 31st. They called the clerk treasurer's office last Tuesday, and that office said they didn't know anything about it, and so they had to call me, which was the right call because obviously it has to be too good. So. Yes, Well, I don't know. Did you know what? I think I did, yeah. Okay. I, it, yeah. It, it, it was all in that big package. Oh, okay. With the bill? With the invoices? No, but it's separate, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got it. All that. So, next question is what we need to do. The water will be just through. And we've got to you know, turn around and start the institute. Water. And there has been no, let's say, rate increase in the for two to three months to build up more. Mm -hmm. By the time we close, I mean, you know, we're going to get our for the time of engineering fees and all that back. Yeah. So, so we're going to have so the sooner that we get the rate increase, we can't go there and put that off with a free MSRF. Yeah. 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 And we'll probably have a debt service, I'm assuming, if it's going to get the SRF, it'll probably be the same time. Two different payments. Because Becky's going to have to do two different claims every month for this, yeah. which they are due, they are due, and the very happy. Posted to our account by the 31st of every month, which is why on claims you see pre written for the August um, payment as well as the July payment. And you should pee in. She actually overnighted those last Thursday and we got to the bank on Friday. And Thursday. Um, so we are up to date through August, um, which will lead me to my next question. How would you guys feel about setting up? Uh, ACH. That way, they don't need to come to the first meeting of the month or be pre-written for the second meeting. We can have them as a standard claim at the second meeting, and they can be paid. They get posted during that meeting um, later on, or they can file them as a standard check the first of the month. Every month. The clerk treasurer's office doesn't have a problem with ACH. I talked to her about that. Yeah, I don't know. Well, when this whole thing came came on, I was curious and I answered my on the how long we talk and all the conversations I had with Dr. Rev, we had meetings in downtown Indianapolis. They never once mentioned 
can't be done. So it really shouldn't be done. It should be really done. That's true. That's uh, true. Okay. So <laughs> you want to go with more reading? Uh, <laughs> well, so our payments that we are making, those transfers, over the next six months, we're actually overfunding the first payment by $84,000. Every month we transfer money for the next six months, we're over funding by 13000 I don't know. But you know what we can do with that money? We can't make an additional principal payment. So this money is just going to sit in that bank account until 2040 when it gets to $1.6 million when we get a, I'm assuming our money back. That's the 35 you're paying. That's already being transferred. That 35 is your debt service. This is on your standard that 59,000 for the six months, and then the 54 for the next six months or whatever. That's you have a surplus on that, not the 35. 35,000 is to make the last payment for the last year. That's what the debt is. Um, and that's way on a true bond. What's the we got we got to set so much aside? What's the last what's the quantity on the thirty five thousand? That's So we we hit our we hit our debt service mark on in 2025, which is seven hundred dollars more than the final payment. Yeah. So I guess yes, that would probably come out wrong. But but this this payment here, the monthly transfer. That we met, like one of the things that we missed the first time, that is thirteen thousand more dollars than what it needs to be every month. Who paid the debt, James? Well, I tried getting a hold of Reedy to ask the question, and I don't hear anything. Else. All right, we'll be together. We'll talk to all tomorrow. Okay. That's going to be better than debating. Calm up here. Because by the end of the. Those are start with survivor. <laughs> 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 By the time that we're done in 2040, that will have a balance that surplus every month would be 1.6 million dollars. I have a spreadsheet I can show you. Well, you can't make a payment. It's never. So from the IFA, you can't make any additional principal payments. So it's not like you can even put that surplus to use no. and pay the loan down faster. No. And we can't make any partial annual payments. If that surplus ever got to a point where it equal the payment, you can pay it. But by the time we get to 2040, our annual payment is $2.1 million. And we never, it's 1.6 is the surplus. So we never hit that mark where we can use that money to pay and pay the full payment. So my assumption is we get that back in the dollars, but. I'll talk with you for being I said, can you pay for email? Somebody had their bank account on it. We'll call it a the dollars fall off. Okay. Well, we'll see what we do. Okay. 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 Uh, do I hear any sound? It's not closed yet, but it doesn't sound. Do we get a uh, six months of fun, one by seven years? Do we have the comparison yet? No. No. Okay. 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 We've been working on that, but then he's gotten diagnosed on this. Oh, okay. So, 
All right. I Next meeting. I have been working on just this year and getting it all like visually. Like the numbers are there. But I've just been trying to make it nice to look at. Um, but then I got done. I called my next week and I might So, yeah. Sorry. We look forward to the next week. That's it? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Oh, no. Ah. The, uh, the support calls. We have uh, Stacy, Todd, Shane, and I have been meeting with uh, Steve, is that it? Yes. From Tyler. Um, so you were in the first meeting, and then you've met with him since at least one time, right? Yeah, I was just in his class. This is Steve's story for his class talking to Steve. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and they had a really good update. Uh, most everything from the original 20 that we had sent them have been either closed or escalated and are being worked on. Um, since that time, there was a, a minor update that got downloaded that caused some more problems. Um, but they are aware of all those, and those are also being worked on as well. There are, there are, right? Yes. Yes. And so, I think, I mean, I feel like we're making good progress. We are going to set up another call, another, right? We set up the last week. Yeah. So we will be meeting with him again. And I, you know, I feel like until it gets resolved, that'll probably maybe be the norm um, just to make sure that we're being heard. We understand where they are at. We did say that, that until they're sorry, let's just get it. We didn't say that we didn't mean so. Yeah. So we not trust them all. But I do, I do feel like we've made very, very good progress. I still have those checks in too. So if you guys want me to send them off, let me know. Sure. Would we expect to be in the written summary of what we want off the list and as a board? Look at is there something you can give us that says we got 18, we got seven, we do think in uh, the of symptoms. I, I can here's what the dashboard looks like. You can work on something like that. Yeah. I don't give you three to make certain spreadsheet shape. You've got a dashboard. Well, I have, yeah, I have a dashboard. It might be your next dashboard. Yeah, sure. yeah, absolutely. Arrange the stuff that's around our neck. <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, okay. Thank you. Yep. I think that was Okay. Stacey, you're up and, and um, probably one of the more critical things that you had to present to us for giving your time. So, your time. I have given you the uh, time to pick all the letters. Um, I asked me if I could find something I could put on social media and on Facebook that. Basically, was understandable for everyone. Um, so I think that would be a copy of it. If you are okay with that, then we just need to get one copy signed by everyone so that you can post on Facebook and then you can use it for the media. Um, but basically, it's just stating that we can start this connect again on September 14th and asking our customers. To come in before that date to set up payment plans and then um, letting them know that at 10 a.m. on the 14th, if they have not set up a payment plan and they have not paid, that they will be disconnected and then you no know, fees will be charged until October 14th. This is Stacey. Yeah. Um, this complies with what the IERC is asking. I asked her to put it in. Uh, it's, you know, we have, you, you also saw a resolution, and <coughs> that's not what people want to read. They want to read, they want to read anything. They want to read something short and precise. So that's why I asked Stacy to put this together. Um, so, one, I think probably we'll go now to the resolution, but once we pass, if we pass the resolution, then this letter or this notice will be can be issued. Well, I have some comments on the other. Do you want to come back to 
Okay. Uh, well, we're going to do the we're going to do the resolution first. Then we'll come back to the letter. Okay. Okay. Uh, so what the resolution does is basically it lays out exactly what we're going to do with regard to billing. Now the moratorium has been lifted. Um, our meeting minutes from when we discussed this previously said that we would get shut off one month from the date that the prohibition ended. Uh, so, Stacey, one thing to note, I have in the resolution that it's September 15, not 14, because the uh, moratorium continues through the 14th, so it would be one month from the 15th. So, we might just want to like go through the letter and make sure that all the dates match. And so, penalties, well, the penalties are 60 days, and since August has 31 days, it's actually the 14th. Okay. But anytime it's a month, it's the 15th, and anytime it's the number of days, it's the 14th. So that's a little weird. Uh, but so the first thing is that um, we, you, you all decided that we would not disconnect for one month after the moratorium ended. So that will be September 15th, 2020. Any account holder who is not current with their bills may enter into a payment agreement for a period of 60 days. So we have to offer payment plans up to 60 days for the IURC. So that 60 day period is October 14, 2020. Now we can disconnect before, it, like if they haven't made a payment plan, we could disconnect them theoretically before October 14th. But we just have to make that available to them through the 14th of October. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a payment plan, maybe sign and payment. Mm -hmm. um, by we have to we have to give them the option to create a payment agreement up through October 14th. So, so the letter has a date of September 14th. Yes. So if they we can start doing disconnects, we all agreed that we would start doing disconnects one month after the moratorium is in. So that is September 15th. If they do not set up a payment plan by that date, then they could be disconnected. But if they say, wait, 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 I need to set up a payment plan, they can technically do that through the 14th of October. But if they just don't set up a payment plan, I, I don't want to pay my bills and I don't want to set up a payment plan, we can still disconnect that after the 15th of September. So that, that's kind of, we just need to leave that window of payment plans open for 60 days. So if they do not set up a payment plan before September 14th, we disconnect. And then they come in and go, wait, they did not connect to me. At that point in time, we can say, okay, then you need to set up a payment plan. Yes. Yeah. And we can require them to make a payment at that time. Yes. And then five months there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We just have to leave the window open for payment plans for 60 days. Okay. So if they don't make one, we can disconnect them. But at that point, they would have the opportunity they can still make it. After October 14th, what I put is that it's up to the discretion of the board as to whether or not they want to continue to make payment plans. So if somebody just doesn't make a payment plan, doesn't make a payment plan, they don't care, their utilities are shut off, whatever, and they come in on October 16th, at that point, the board would have to decide whether or not they wanted to continue to accept payment plans. So, um, the next part is that uh, we have to give them up to six months to make up, to get their account current. So that was for the IURC. And then we decided that we wanted to create a panel consisting of a board member, a general manager, and safety. Uh, so Todd, safety, and a board member to uh, make determinations for account holder, holders who have entered a payment agreement but then default on that payment agreement. So I set up a payment plan, I make the first payment, I miss the second payment, I'm going to be disconnected. They get the opportunity, if they request it, to show up in front of this panel. And then the panel can decide what they need to do in order to not be disconnected. And if they keep showing up, the panel can say, too bad, they're being disconnected. Um, but that's an option that we've created. Um, 
if they have not entered into a payment agreement, then they will be disconnected just like they normally would. So if they don't enter into a payment agreement or they were good up until you know October and then they stop paying, just like any other normal disconnection, they can still be disconnected. Um, they're going to receive the same notice as they always have, except for a few days prior to disconnection, they will get a door notice. Um, for residential account holders, all reconnection fees, disconnection fees, deposits, and late fees are waived for a period of 60 days, which would be October 14th, and that is per the IURP. Um, they issued a ruling that said that we're not allowed to collect any of those fees or the deposit for the period of 60 days, and that is pretty much the gist of it. Any questions? Um, well, I thought, so I, I passed out before, um, and this was a couple of meetings ago, but panel procedures, here I've got a copy if you want to pass that to Joe, um, and what the panel procedures say, these are the guidelines kind of for the panel, and what they get to do, um, is it's only people who have entered into a valid uh, payment agreement and they have to request a panel meeting um, before um, they are disconnected. Mm -hmm. 48 hours before. Mm -hmm. 40. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Several, it was several meetings ago, like back in May. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, um, pursuant to this, what we had talked about before, is I don't think we had put a, um, I don't think we had put a limit on the number of times they could appear, but essentially what the board kind of talked about was that if they show up twice, then the panel can say, well, we've decided we're going to disconnect you. You've already been here before. But that they would have the opportunity to come before the panel multiple times. Um, so I don't have anything in there, but I can change that if you want. Um, but what my understanding was, was that we might there might be a circumstance where someone might get behind, and then they're really trying, and then they get behind again, and you wouldn't necessarily want to shut them off. But then there's a circumstance where someone just blatantly is a pay, and you may. Um, so we left it kind of open to the board, the panel discretion on, on whether or not they would. So one of the questions I'm going to talk to you afterwards actually have to do with the scheduling. So it says that um, a meeting after we receive the handwritten note from them that we need to schedule um, a meeting as soon as possible by the panel. Um, but it also says that once we give them the meeting date, mm -hmm. that they have um, 48 hours to give us written notice that they did not come to that mm -hmm. meeting. Mm -hmm. So I guess in saying that we need to schedule it as soon as possible, we can't schedule it any sooner than 48 hours. Probably not. And the reason I did that is because you want to make sure that you give people plenty of time to be able to get a babysitter or a peer or whatever. Right. So that's why I put that timeline in there. The other thing was I wanted to make sure that people weren't just abusing the system forever, which is why I said that they can reschedule it one time and that's it. Um, but, but yeah, so I didn't want to put it so stringent that we're going to schedule it for the very next day and they couldn't get a babysitter, they couldn't get off work, and then they try and reschedule it, and again, they couldn't get a babysitter, they couldn't get off work. So that's why it's that time frame. But again, all of this can be changed. This was just something that I came up with. Okay, and then also it says we have to notify them of the time they place. Mm -hmm. Can this be by email and we're sending them a board offer, or do we have to send it through the mail? I'm fine. So thinking if we send them an email, they're going to get it much quicker than if we send it through. I don't care as long as it's in writing. So we have a paper trail. Okay. As long as there's a paper trail, and then what we should do is we should mark on it. Like when I send a letter via email, I would put at the top sent via email to this email address. So I've got a paper trail of what I did. 
if we're doing it via door knock or delivered on such a good day, then we just need to put it in the file. Okay. So I don't really care as long as it's in writing. Okay. And then the last thing I have is the time to get down there and put me off on the like the five business days before making a decision, mm -hmm. but are we actually able to make a decision at that time? Yes, you can. But what, what you should do is you can get them like an oral decision, but then you want to follow up in writing again, so we've got a paper trail. Okay. We just want to make sure that every that we have a record of every contact we have with them, so that if they come back later, we can say, well, we had the panel meeting, and this was the decision, and this is the reason why they made the decision they made. Um, and so you can give them your decision at that time, but then follow up in writing, and then you have five days to, to follow up. I mean, you can request that, and when you set the time, you can tell them what documents to bring. Like when you give them the notice of when the panel meeting is, whatever the, whatever the panel wants to see, you can ask them for that information. I didn't put anything specific in there because I didn't know exactly what you would want to see. I didn't know if you wanted, and I didn't know if people would have that documentation. And that might be part of just knowing the reasons of disconnects. Now, someone that may have been, they were in the hospital. And someone else, it may be that they lost their job. So, to to send a required amount or a required set of criteria, you know, I think just what you had by bringing your own documentation, it should be their responsibility to bring whatever they want to support their case, whether they're in the hospital, bring us up a note from the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if they lost yeah. their job, show your own employee. I mean, I the, the challenge. We're thinking the same line. I just yeah. see somebody go up and say, like, well, I didn't know it was going to be. Well, it says it says right here on this procedure that they need to bring documentation. And what what I would probably do is I probably just make a copy of this, and when you send them the notice, just send them a copy of this, and they have what is expected of them and what's expected of the meal, so they know what to expect. That was kind of what my intention was. The problem is, anytime you have a situation like this, a lot of the decisions are going to be. I mean, it's all at the discretion of the panel. So you can get a person who you feel really bad for who's coming in with four kids and you're like, oh my gosh, like they're not eating because they're paying their electric bill. We want to give them a little break. And and they may not have any documentation. So by setting a hard and fast rule, it kind of makes it difficult because it, it binds the panel. And I think it really needs to be a case-by-case -case basis. And that's why we decided to do the panel instead of just setting a, a bunch of hard and fast rules. Other okay. questions? Yeah. We'll talk about the resolution first. Any, any other questions on the resolution? Someone making a motion to adopt resolution 2020-08-17-01. Go Resolution 2020-08-17-01. A second? Second. Mike Reader, second. Roll call. Rick Hagan? Aye. Mike Reader? Aye. Joe Root? Aye. Kim Brewer? Aye. Mike Kelly? Aye. Next item, the letter, that's where the, the announcement, I guess, would be more proper with the, the changes of, of, that are necessary for the date of the 15th, which will have to Get a new one out. Yes. Um, and then Rick, I know you had questions about that, and I think Joe did. So we'll go to Rick first. Number one, I appreciate the effort. I think the senatorial in this should be taught in Stacy. To me, this is an operational procedure, notification to our customers. I don't see a need or a benefit of each of the board members signing this letter. But that's item one. Um, item two in the top line, I'd like it to read concerning utility disconnect versus concerning disconnect. Um, I don't see the date of October 14th mentioned in the text, so I think that should be explained. 
Well, when we say in the third paragraph, all late penalties and fees will resume on October 15th, that doesn't really tell me anything. Uh, in the, in the paragraph above, we're talking about tax due payments. Um, and you must have a plan so you avoid being disconnected. You explain it pretty well in that second paragraph, but the third paragraph, you need to explain what we're trying to say about penalties and fees. Like you just said, they'll resume on October 14th. I don't know if you make it that way. And then um, lastly, in the second paragraph, I'd like to be a little more specific. It says in the second sentence of the second paragraph, all tax due payments must be taken care of before, I think it should say, must be paid in full. It's taken care of. I can interpret that any way I want. Yeah, but you're also offering a payment plan, so that's taking that's making sure that they're being taken care of. So it doesn't necessarily have to be paid. I'm totally crazy, but let's, let's say what we need. Let's say that. Well, it doesn't say past due payments must be paid in full or a payment plan must be entered into. It doesn't say that. It says must be taken care of. So um, I, I just think it was pretty close to this, but those are my comments. Um, not really. And you're fine with it? I guess go with it. Well, if you read on, it says you are unable to make a full payment from your offer six months payment plan, but I think if you read through the whole thing, it's explained. But I mean, we can do whatever you want for the board wants, but if you read through the whole thing, I think it's going to be going pretty well. Okay, well, we just read it. That's fine. I think probably what will happen is that people see this. The purpose of this is to one, let people know that the rules are changed, and two, that there's a method for them to fix it to stimulate contact with the billing office on how to how to get this accomplished. And that's one of the reasons that when I started this tonight, I said we wanted to try to eliminate as much of the language in it as possible because. People will, there's seven or eight people in here. We can all read this and all read something that's different into it. Yeah, it's training jobs. Yes, you should have you take out a lot of words and just say, if you have a past due amount, please contact the other one. We read the one I wrote. Okay. <laughs> well, you got to read I was just thinking for Facebook, but then it says, it's headline. FMU disconnection of services to resume when disconnections could begin. Bank of Municipal Utilities disconnect procedure will begin September 14th. Headline Payment Plan Available. A six month plan will be available to customers who have received disconnection notices and have not already cleared the account. How to set up the plan? Call the Frank and Utility Billing Office at 765-659-336 for an appointment to make an application for the payment plan. I like that. Is that a different version than you did then? One or the other? Or That's all. That's all it is. Okay. I didn't, I mean, I, I know I, I, I wanted something, I wanted to make me more greedy because I want it all to show on one screen on on Facebook. So well, to me that says what you said. I'm just one person here, so you guys speak up. To me says what's better. I I, I can see this one being a in addition to the or the stuff in the bill. 
or somewhere where you know, we don't. Can we go into the ones that get disconnect those only? They do maybe need a little more detail than what was there, but just for the general as, public. As long as we don't have another insert going on. You know, I kind of plagiarize it because every every utility company in central Indiana put the same old thing in the star on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Uh, veteran, Indiana Public, uh, all the front end, I don't know who all did it, but they all did it. Almost every one of them had the same thing. But they wanted the public to know that it's happening. So, regarding this draft letter, does anyone want their name on here besides Todd and Casey?
Okay. So we're to the point of uh, authorizing the release of this information through the means that we talked about, the letter and the just the brief the synopsis that would be here on the social media. Uh, I don't think we I don't think we need a motion, but if we feel we you better off if you had a motion because and then and, and this letter the, the one that goes out has all the signatures of the board people on it. Um, I'm open to suggestions for it to just by consensus we'll do it. Well I've got a question. Okay. I think Joe had a very good point. I'm gonna read this letter and I'm gonna have her reply from the conversation. Um, I can envision a couple hundred people showing up at the billing office September 14th. And I think we're going to have some trouble. I think that's a minimum. If you ignore all the other heads that I'd like to see done. And that's fine. Uh, contact the billing office to set an appointment. I think if I would, I would agree to this if we took the Salvation Army out. Clean up what you guys are stating. And is this for uh, residential customers? Um, all customers? I think it's other resort. The IURC was up for residential. Something. Well, the IURC says residential for the penalties and deposit. I'm not sure about what it says as far as offering a payment plan. I'm not sure if it, it did not make that clear in its order whether or not that was for everybody. It did specifically lay out residential for the fee, but um, not for the payment plan. My understanding was that was everybody. Okay, let me ask this question. Or payment plans, which I feel want from landlords. What do you mean by that? Some some people pay their rent and their utility bill all their rent, and the landlords haven't been paying the utility bill. Well, they haven't been collecting rent. Now, does that fall under the same thing to offer landlord payment plan? I mean, I would think so, because my, again, my understanding was, and I can look into this further, but my understanding was that they really only laid out residential only for the late fees and the deposit, not for the payment plan. I mean, I, I don't know that they intended it that way, but they, they specifically said this applies to residential only, okay. and they did not say that with regard to the payment plan. I will say that the landlord that has that agreement is on a residential, it's not a commercial account. Okay. I mean, uh, it would depend on that number of units. Yeah. And it's not really flat. Under four, or four under, I think. Yeah. So, so this is for residents of commercial or anything else. Don't pay so the payment plan. That's what we're trying to make sure we're saying that she's not 100% sure. So, the way that I interpreted it from the IURC, they specifically said that for the late fees and the penalties, Residents, this applied to only residential customers, but it did not say residential only for the payment plan. And it did not say residential only, like throughout the disconnect moratorium, it didn't say that for residential only. That applied to everybody. So I am assuming, though I, I cannot be 100% sure, that the payment plan was intended for everybody, but the late penalty deposit, that sort of thing, was only intended for residential. Is the goal to get payment, whether we get it over yeah. six months or I, one I, month? I would personally feel that a lot of their businesses are struggling. I think if we can help them with the payment plan, I think we should do a uh, part of the fees ability. That's something that they're going to lose some money on. Well, last time, one time when I was in Stacey's office, and she rang us in court, there's no commercial properties for businesses that are behind on the pay. There's 
I'm going to go back to what Todd said here. Say the people that are renting this house are paying their rent, but the guy that owns it is not paying it. Because he's needing to use part of that money to make his bank loan payments. So then you can still disconnect. They're doing their job. It's something struggling with every day. Even without the COVID situation, it's something that they deal with on a day to day basis. Wait, then I pay my rent. Well, the land will have to pay pay us.
for the panel and how they're going to proceed with uh, this. Did we already talk about that? Well, we talked about it, but I don't remember what we got. We didn't have it yet. I'll make a motion that we adopt the uh, COVID 19 panel procedures. Panel procedures. All right. Roll call. Joe Root? Aye. Rick Evans? Aye. Mike Reader? Aye. Kent Brewer? Aye. Mike Kelly? Aye. On that, that's on the uh, title page, and that's the way we put the date of today on it. All right. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. Oh, yes, I did today contact the Eunice and I scheduled a training day. Um, I scheduled it out for November so we can kind of get through all this. Um, they'll be coming to help us go over the um, Basically, the bad debt procedures that we haven't been able to do since we've been on Unis. Um, so that we can get caught on that. We haven't brought that before but since 20, the 2014 bad debt that we brought to you in 2015 is the last time. So I've got that scheduled for November to help someone come in training with that, or they'll, they'll give a list saying that they'll show us how to do that and then we can get back on track with them. Okay, and credit card payments are being processed now. Credit card payments, the website is back up and going, and it's been doing well. Less problems now than we had before. Um, it was Paymanthus that was the problem. The other thing is, currently, we've dropped, after our drop box is not functioning. It is, it is not. We close it is not dropping the payments. So we actually have um, ordered a new drop box. It's almost like a mailbox that you open up, like in the post office, um, that will be built into that same wall. So um, we won't have anything electronic to fill up with it in. So, and we have, um, it, it was supposed to be delivered today. It did not get delivered. So I'm hoping tomorrow it will be delivered. And then um, my sister will be coming to take out the old one because he built the wall around the first one. So he'll be coming in and we're using that to make a new one. Okay. Smoke that over on uh, Gar, Milroy, and over 
section and those things that I take main and those are the plants that we've been looking at for course we're naming them family five, home loaders, clean up cabinets, old drill limits, and trainer yards. I remember any day we popped the mantle on that line coming from the south mm -hmm. and full time. Mm -hmm. These are the houses that on that line. I contacted all of you, all of the board members, about a, kind of an emergency purchase that had to be made for a computer. Um, and, and that was authorized to them. So, and I hopefully it's on order and be here soon. Shane and I and Don and that last week. Appreciate that. It's in your role. And actually, after uh, we got through that, and, uh, that was on order. It actually came in $3,000 left. Uh, you know, Point Great. This one is the camera front. This one is Kenny or not? Uh, there was a situation where, with, even if it hadn't been replaced, it was going to have to have significant modifications because of the demand of the new software. But it wouldn't come on if he couldn't get it to come on. We couldn't get it come on in the truck, and then he came full crack down the truck out right here and kept getting on, kept getting on, and tried it three, three times in one day and said, Where he went home. I'll just try it again. But after the moment, we have used it twice since. It's probably too bad stuff. That's got a solid state, yeah, drive. That helps. A lot of them won't drive. There's like one guy that will drive with their own rest of the shut but from them, they're saying you can drive. That's why I have solid state basically. And then I have a question. I have one other thing, Mike. In Henry Avenue, it doesn't have storm sewer from Boomer to Short Myrtle. And then from the water <coughs> warehouse back east, I'm doing profile on that. But then you just want to get it we have some most of the time. So just be selling what we have to get. Rick, I think we're moving to the right. General Manager. Couple things. Um Rick had out there where uh important meeting about uh how long our contract was with this one. They want to come to the second meeting in September to discuss the length of that and send it in. So, yes, they will be. I got them on the, I got them on the agenda for the second meeting, or the second meeting in September. Um, I think it'll be on what day? 2042. Okay. I can give you a heads up on what it is. 2042 is a 30 years notice of cancellation, is what they want. And uh, they presented this to the mayor and I, or the mayor and myself. I told him that my team here can be no way, but I'm not close to it. So, anyway, um, they will be here for presentation. Todd, is that what they talked to us about previously, like way back then? Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, it doesn't seem to be dated. 
I think so. You should have been around maybe one or three. Somewhere ahead. Uh, it was uh, Mary Jane McMahon. <laughs> it was that one. Um, and then they said they gave me. Draft. Yeah, right. Previously signed. Right. Yeah. But yeah, it would be signed by the mayor. Right. So what they've got now, what they've sent us draft wise, um, so this would be an amendment to the agreement. Um, is what they're trying to do. And I think they still have it set up so that it'd be signed by the mayor because it would be an ordinance. Not they want they want to do an ordinance, not just a resolution. They want they want to have eight more years of the contract with a 30 year notice of cancellation instead of 10 years. And what do we the contract is good for that? So what do we get? We get that. Why waste our time? Why don't you just tell them what I am? I can do that. Well, I'm not an adjustment. Basically, basically what they want is they want us to do they want us to do a resolution recommending this to the council and then the council would do an ordinance. But the reason that they want it, from my recollection, and this is pulling from last year apparently. When they sat down and talked to me about it, it's because it makes them able to have better credit if they have longer contracts and then they can utilize their credit to get more clean energy resources and provide better service to all of their uh, clients. Is Ron my Roy, understanding. That's Ron a summary. The best credit rating from Sandra Porsche. Yeah, he wants to make triple bottom or triple A plus or whatever. Yeah, that's what he's going for. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't hear the last part. Why? Um, I can look into it. If they're wanting to do an ordinance, though, that would be the city council. I don't care what they want. Okay, I'll look. I'll look. I will check the statute.
they have threat. They put a high threat out there that they can do the water recovery system. But um, the more we found out, did some research, and Chris Hansen did some research today. Um, I'm not sure that it would work here, even. They're still talking a lot of water and the water uh, plant and everything else in Arizona. But um, they they really came around to that solitude and when they get their black buckets for that, that's what kind of something with with where we were where we're at with the argument. But and you've been crunching numbers for us like crazy and uh you just told me today that what they wanted was to work and things so but they're good with the rate increase that we have right now. Their their understanding and what we're at is just they want to look out for them. Another thing we were talking about later on is we did have a 20 year agreement with them and then we'd like to go back and get some support for them. So we're getting them. It's a chore, but we're getting them. You know, two things, obviously. That's one of them. Eric Woods came back to his last one when he was on the water reading increase. We don't like to get the same thing. Yeah. And I'll just guarantee you. But you know, the last five, six years, and maybe longer, the water department has lost money on the water that they're giving to the I agree. I agree. And so that can't that can't happen. Right. But if you look at the existing contract, there's a clause in there that we should be charging for our cost to produce water. And that was never followed. Correct. Previous boards, previous leadership out there. Correct. And so the only thing that was followed was the CPI adjustment and not the cost of water adjustment. And so, you know, those things, you know, I'm not, I'm not in much of giving them a bunch of interest to a degree. Right. And I don't think so much as breaks. I can't think it's one of them. Here. They're they're not they're looking for something comforting that we're not they're not going to see another fifty percent increase in this down the road. They're still willing to do their CPI adjustments every year. Um, that that's been covered. Um, it's just they're just looking from their end. You know, would we do a fifty percent or we don't know? We don't know what the situation. We don't know what the future is going to bring. And that's what we talked about today with kind of settled things down. Um, you know, we don't know if the EPA is going to come in with the and uh, that's some of the stuff that we've got to put in some documentation. So, we kind of covered, we, we covered a lot of it today. So, it's not a, it's not that they're, now that they're asking for anything special, other than something a little more comfortable than this last one where, in the contract, the maximum that we could have wanted them was 64%. And there's no way to take a fight of it because they didn't have them. And then that's really where they're stuck at right now. And I don't think anybody here wants to see them get something like what we're doing now. So um, we're working on closer. You know, much, much better than that. Yeah. Any other questions for what? All right. Plain. I'll move to second. Motion by Ken, a second by Joe, and the group plain is presented. So far. Mike Reader? Aye. Rick Duncan? Aye. Joe Reed? Aye. Kid Brewer? Aye. Mike Kelly? Aye. Okay, Alicia had the papers. Uh, her center was on overtime tonight. Um, real briefly, the first thing is this doesn't need any action. You last meeting um, authorized this. Uh, I took our resolution regarding the face mask policy and I put it into policy form with an employee acknowledgement. Um, so essentially, it's the same thing as our resolution, except it is in a policy format um, and has a violation. Anybody who violates it is subject to the 
uh, what area I'm going to be employed in. So I just wanted to pass that out. And I put at the top that it was effective August 3rd because that is when we voted on the resolution for that. Uh, that is for the employee to sign. And then this should be put in their file. So acknowledging that they received the policy, they give it back to Todd, Todd puts it in their file or whoever the department is. So, and then have them all signed and put it in their personal file. Okay. Um, the second thing, uh, and this doesn't necessarily need any access either, um, I had drafted, Rick asked me to draft a uh, waiver, a liability waiver for anybody who volunteered at the lagoon. Um, so I did do that. And so this is the waiver that someone would need to utilize before they were able to volunteer so that way we don't get uh, liability from someone getting hurt while they're volunteering and rich didn't have any issues with it so uh, but i did just want to let you all know if you want to vote on it and adopt it you can but i don't know that that's necessary i'm happy either way for more information i will mention the prior liability waiver is one page was uh, to be received by Dean Sire at the time. And there's no signature in power and then to acknowledge the waiver. Uh, this is much better. It may actually have the effect of reducing or eliminating volunteers, but that's okay. <laughs> and I might have already had one person volunteer to repair the roof on one of the pagodas. And when he learned that he would need to sign a liability waiver, he probably just so, um, still, we don't want people out there without liability waiving the inside. So, I, I'm in favor of this, however, more than likely. Okay. That, yes, we can adopt that. Let's take this. He has made a recommendation as a representative of that group. Yeah, I don't want to. I'll be out of that. 